All right, this is our scene on Clostridium Septicum. Here we go. Meet Sarah, a second year medical student who's completely burnt and tired out of studying for step one. And amidst her boredom, a thought crosses her mind. I can't wait until September comes. September comes reminds us of Septicum, which anchors us to this scene on Clostridium Septicum. And this story, by the way, is actually a quite accurate representation of what goes through 99% of second year medical students who are just eager to start rotations. But anyway, now she's bored and on her phone and avoiding learning about what's on her screen. Let's take a look. At the top left of the screen, we see gas gangrene that spontaneously appears on the screen. Spontaneous gas gangrene is most associated not with perfringens. That's traumatic gas gangrene. But spontaneous gas gangrene is actually most associated with Clostridium septicum. You may think that the boards doesn't test on this pathogen, but it has shown up on exams, and that's why we're discussing it here. On the bottom right of the screen, we see a picture a representation of colon cancer. Clostridium septicum is highly associated with colonic malignancy. When students think of a gram-positive organism that's associated with colon cancer, they think bovis, strep bovis. But Clostridium septicum is just as much associated with colon cancer, and therefore, if a patient is diagnosed with septicum infection, we need to screen for colon cancer. And of course, over here we see the pathogen which showed up in our tetany video, one of the Clostridium gram-positive purple pathogens, which reminds us again of Clostridia. And it's a gram-positive rod whose gas mask reminds us that it's an anaerobic, an obligate anaerobe. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the scene on Clostridium septicum. Congratulations to the winner of our contest. The answer to our riddle, which I'll post over here. All right, I hope you enjoyed. Take care.